I can't wait. I have to try one. Oh yeah. That sounds really crunchy. It's really light and crispy on the outside and this like soft onion on the inside. Hi, I'm Hannah. And I'm Shay, and we're the International. Today we're cooking South African food. South Africa is a very diverse country and of course it has many regional influences. There's the indigenous influence and then there's the Cape Malay influence, the Indian influence, the Dutch influence and it's a beautiful fusion of a lot of different cultures. So today I will be making a South African shepherd's pie called as a babuti. And I'm going to be making a sambal, which is a nice spicy condiment made with chilies and carrots. And I'm also going to be making dolchis, which is a fried chili crisp. It's really, really tasty. Babuti is traditionally served with yellow rice, so why do anything different? We're going to make some yellow rice. Let's get started. So we're gonna get started with the sambal. We're doing this part first, not because it's cooked, but because it needs to sit in its lemony juices for a while and kind of soften up a little bit. Sambal is an Indonesian condiment that's popular all over Southeast Asia and has made its way to South Africa where they use their own local ingredients to make their own version of it in Cape Malay cuisine. We got a head start without you looking. This is two carrots and one apple that have been grated. Can you see? We put half teaspoon of salt and half of a lemon squeezed over this. So we're trying to extract all of the juices out of these so that we don't have like a really watery sambal. So I'm just gonna do this by hand. I have clean hands and just kind of squeeze all the juices, these salty, appley juices. Don't give this to your kids. They're not gonna like it. It's gonna be like the worst apple juice they've ever had. I'll drink it. He's gonna drink it. Okay, so that's pretty good. Try not to waste any. Don't, I mean, I guess you can keep some of the some of the juices, but don't. you just don't want a really watery sambal. It smells really good. If it weren't for the salt, I bet this would be really nice. So after I finish squeezing this out, we'll add the rest of the ingredients in here, and that's it. You just let it sit for three hours and let it soften up. We don't need to add any salt because we already had salted these, so they're kind of nice and salty. I have two tablespoons of minced garlic here. Uh, this is a lot of garlic, probably more than you need. Not more than we need though. We need the garlic. This is also two tablespoons of minced ginger. We also really like ginger in this house. Okay, this is one teaspoon of sugar, which is gonna be really nice to balance out the salt. This is one minced Thai red chili. You can use any red chili. This, we kept the seeds in because we like it spicy. If you don't like it uh, that spicy, just pull the seeds out. Oh, this is bad. So I stuck my index finger in here and I have contacts in. So you do the math. This is half a teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. It wasn't freshly ground, I lied. This is two tablespoons of white vinegar. You can use whatever vinegar you have on hand. This is what we had. And this is a quarter cup of cilantro leaves and stems. The stems add a lot of extra flavor, so don't skip those. And uh, hold on, there's like 10 other steps. Oh, no, that's just it. This is it, we're done. Just mix it together and let it sit for like three hours. Oh, booty. All right, so we're just gonna fry one yellow onion. Babuti, babuti. I know, I'm just having a lot of fun saying this babuti. <laughs> So the idea is not to get these uh, onions like really brown. We're just kind of like far cooking these. Three cloves of garlic. I just mince these kind of super fine. Because honestly, the last thing you want in a shepherd's pie is like a giant piece of garlic, right? I think you can think of worse things than that. It's been about 30 seconds. Put some of the uh, ground lamb in there. I'm just crushing it as I go because, you know, I just got a little spoon and I don't want to ruin my nonstick uh, pan. You know how some people will just like scratch it with like a wooden spoon or something? Hannah doesn't do that, and neither do I. So all of my brown lamb has been crumbled in. This was uh, one pound, or like 500 grams, if you're keeping score at home. I'm just gonna go and wash my hands real quick. So I've been uh, sauteing my meat for like about uh, two minutes. I'm just gonna add these uh, grated carrots. This is just one large carrot, approximately a cup. So while this guy cooks, let me tell you a little bit about this delightful dish, right? So of course, there's a lot of other dishes that are like traditionally South African. But then I was looking at this guy and I was like, this is awesome. I really like uh, shepherd's pie 
And I know this is not quite exactly a shepherd's pie, but uh, you know, it's kind of the same. So basically it's like meat that you've kind of far cooked and then on top of that you pour this uh, eggy, milky, creamy custard and then basically it sets like a big loaf. You'll see, it's really nice. So apparently this is very uh, traditional to the uh, Cape Malay community, as we initially said. Babuti, what a delightful name. It's been about two minutes since I added the carrots to the lamb, and now it's time to add the dry spices. So this is two teaspoons of curry powder, one teaspoon of coriander, one teaspoon of turmeric, one teaspoon of sugar. It smells really good. And this is about like one teaspoon of salt, maybe even one and a half. Use a little bit less if you want. You like a little bit of extra salt. Extra salt, extra garlic, extra flavor. So the idea is not to cook the meat completely. Like I said, I mean, it's gonna bake in the oven for a while. So this should be good. Our beef and carrot mixture has been cooling for about five minutes. Uh, so what I have over here is a panad. It's basically just stale bread that is soaked in some milk. So this is like a quarter cup of milk and uh, this is like one slice of white bread. So I'm just gonna pour this panad into our meat mixture. It doesn't really need to be exact, but you know, keep it kind of close. The purpose of this thing is to make this uh, meat a little bit more moist. So you can actually use this technique uh, in like meatballs or like your meatloaf or recipes like that, that require a little bit of moisture. And honestly, it can even stretch the recipe a little bit if you wanna, you know, increase the bread ratio a little bit. It's fine, but probably don't. On to the custard. So what I have here is one cup of milk. Full cream is better. This is two eggs. I'm just gonna give this a nice whisk and this will form the nice custard that goes on top of our meat mixture. Oh, and if you have not already, turn your oven on 350. Okay, my custard is pretty custardy. My meat mixture is nice and cool. Eh. Room temp. If you're serving this food to other people, probably don't put your finger in there, but it's just me and my wife. Okay, so I'm going to split my meat mixture into two different Pyrex dishes. Uh, this is oven safe, obviously. If we had a bigger dish, we could have just made it in one, but I'm just kind of, you know, splitting it down because I don't want it to get too big. And it's also good to like freeze one if you want. So I'm just trying to make this smooth. Don't go too crazy, but you know, a little bit smooth is better because you don't want any peaks sticking out of your custard mixture. Custard goes on top. Be careful to about equally split this. You don't want one to be like wetter than the other. Alrighty, I'm gonna put these in the oven. 350, one hour. Okay, the fun stuff. We're gonna make the dulcies, which are a fried, crispy, spicy, well, it's crispy on the outside, soft on the inside spicy little dough ball made from chickpea flour and it's fried so it's gonna be good clearly that's just how it works so I'm gonna take one third cup of chickpea flour base on and put it in this bowl we're just gonna combine our dry ingredients this is two tablespoons of all-purpose flour this is one teaspoon of baking powder one teaspoon of cumin one teaspoon of coriander half a teaspoon of turmeric. So those are our dry ingredients. I'm gonna mix this together a little bit, combine it. So these are shallots. Uh, this is about three shallots, thinly sliced. I'm gonna throw these in there. I have uh, one Thai green chili and one Thai red chili. You can use just green or just red, but you know, I like to keep it fun. It's gonna be pretty spicy. You can add more or less but they're chili bites. You kind of have to go all in. Um, and this is a quarter cup of chopped coriander leaves. Oh, and the stems. It's just, the, it's all of it. Mix it together. So I'm gonna coat these a little bit, stir it in. We're gonna add some salt. I'm gonna add one large pinch. I have big hands, so maybe like two your size pinches. Who knows? Uh-oh. Yeah, I'm gonna put more in. That's good. We'll be fine. Mix this all together, then we're slowly going to add water in until you get kind of a nice soupy-ish batter. Not too soupy. Okay, it's time to fry these bad boys. This is pretty easy. We're not gonna try to make this a perfect ball. Just take a spoon, scoop some of this um, onion dough batter. This is a standard 
tablespoon. And you kind of have to move a little quickly so that these cook at the same time. I'm just gonna do four at a time because I don't wanna crowd and get these all stuck together. Okay, so our babuti uh, needs an accompaniment and this traditionally is a yellow rice. It's actually a pretty simple rice. You can make it on the stove top, but I'm just gonna make it in the instant pot real quick. So basically, uh, this is one cup of basmati rice, two cups of water. This is one teaspoon of turmeric powder, about a handful of uh, sultan or raisins, and I'm gonna add a nice pinch of salt. So now there's an optional ingredient, cinnamon. I know some people don't really like that. Small stick of cinnamon. I'm just gonna give this like a nice stir. You can add butter if you want at this stage, but I'll usually just add butter in the end. All right, so I'm gonna cook this for six minutes. Mm -hmm. All right, South African food. We're really excited about this. So we have been wanting to try this boboti for a while now since we found out we were making South African food. It's really good. It's like a really fancy meatloaf and you're gonna love it. I'm sorry guys, I didn't really wait for you. I've been sneaking bites of this all evening because I just could not say no. Yeah, this boboti is really good, but what actually really strikes me as really tasty is the carrot and apple sambal. It just has this like really nice uh, cooling effect. Yeah, it's very good. It's nice and tangy. Mm -hmm. And uh, these little guys, amazing. <laughs> uh, these are the dolchies and they're, they were really crispy when we finished them, but it's been a while since we fried them. So they're not as crispy as before, but they still taste really good. It is spicy though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you guys don't like that much spicy food, lower it down. I mean, that's totally fine. Add more onions, a little bit less uh, ch chili. But we really like chilies. Mmm. It's awesome. And the yellow rice with the raisins, it just works really well with the boboti. The boboti itself is like a really soft, nice, pillowy, mm -hmm. meatloaf kind of thing, right? And that extra egg custard mm -hmm. makes it so moist. Yeah. Did you say that maybe? Nope. Really good. Alright you guys, so we're gonna finish eating this plate and we'll see you next week.